Okay, so um, yeah, basically if you're gonna um, use Maya Quadra or if you're going to use um, something like the Sketch Topo software, you do need to reduce the poly count. So in this case, I just took one of these default heads and dynamished it to about one and a half million polys. Um, now, some artists I know, they work only in Dynamesh. Usually they're high level concept artists in ZBrush. So all they do is they Dynamesh sometimes under the tens of millions or hundreds of millions of polys. Uh, but you need a very good system for that. Uh, but like I said, if you're doing topology, which I, I think everybody should focus on at some point, um, you will need to go into Z plugin and use what's called Decimation Master. So what Decimation Master does is, um, first I'm gonna pre-process the, the current subtool. Now you can do all subtools at once and you can do, and then you decimate them. So basically it's two steps. You, it analyzes the surface. So it's pre-calculating how many polygons it can take out, how many will stay. It turns everything into triangles. Um, so I'm gonna just hit the pre-process and I'll pause for a second. Um, so pre-process, this takes minutes <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, like I said, in 2018, uh, it's gotten a lot faster. 2019, it's even faster than 2018. And if you go back to Z plugin, you have a few options. So basically, if you know, you know your computer can't handle over half a million polys, you can say, uh, either in polys or points, Sometimes these numbers are very, very close together. I find once you're in tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of polys or points, they're roughly the same number. So I tend to kind of use them a little bit loosely and interchangeably, but it's once you get to lower poly counts, it's not exactly the same. Or you can go by percentage. So if you know you have 1.46 or 1.5 million polys, 10% will be 150,000 polys. There's also preset numbers down here. So this bottom half of the interface is basically all about the the number of polys that you're going to reduce to. So what the algorithm is doing is anywhere where there's more creases, folds, wrinkles, uh, more subtle details like skin pores, it'll cluster polygons or triangles in those areas and in flatter, smoother areas, it'll take them out. So, you know, if you're just doing topology and stuff and you don't need to, to print something, um, really low polys, like the presets of 150 or 250 are fine. If you wanted to go to half a million, just type in 500, this is in, um, thousands of polys or thousands of points. So you can actually manually type in a number, hit enter, it, it, that, it then updates the percentage. So it's telling you it's 17% of the total poly count. Uh, and the points here you see is actually, it's showing it as roughly half, but um, like I said, that number's a little kind of goofy sometimes. When I do 3D prints, um, some printers have limited RAM or memory on board, so they can't load a huge file. So if I'm 3D printing, I tend to keep that number lower, half a million a quarter million or 150,000. So 250,000 or 150,000 are mm -hmm. good uh, values for me often when I decimate for 3D print. So again, if you're just doing topology, uh, you don't necessarily need the details, you just need the basic shapes. I'll hit 150 just so we can see. And like I said, anywhere where it's sort of flatter, it strips out a lot of polys. Anywhere where there's more detail, it gets a little more kind of focused, right? Around the things like the eyelids, uh, the lip, the lip line. And again, where it's super flat, like here, strips things out completely. Now, just as a side note, um, I've seen people now do in, like an environment mesh where there's like rocky terrain, uneven surfaces and stuff. What they'll do is they'll uh, do a high res sculpt, maybe in Dynamesh, or um, they have a clean low res mesh. They unwrap it, they do a high res sculpt, and you can actually tell us to keep the UV borders. So all the vertices and the edges that are related to the UVs stay, and you can bake out maps. So that's uh, kind of an interesting feature as well. I have a student in third year uh, who had one section of an environment that was something like 1.7 million polys. And we got that down to 100,000 polys and it looks almost identical. But we kept the UVs and then transferred the texture maps from the super high res to the low res. And now he's got seven or eight piles of like debris and broken bricks and wood everywhere that he can render really fast. Yeah. Mesh doesn't need UVs, the low res does, but a lot of times in ZBrush, the high and the low are the same mesh, it's just that you're dividing it. Although, either through ZBrush, we can sort of cheat this by making an, a separate low res and projecting, right? Or if we export two separate meshes, we can use something like XNormal. Maya has a tool which is called a, uh, I think, transfer map tool. Um, so there's tons of other software that allows you to kind of take two different meshes uh, that basically have the same pivot point uh, and the low res has to have UVs and you can extract the information from the high to the low. So anyways, that's a little side note. So 
this thing is low enough and like I said if you want you can either go Z and if go Z doesn't work um, you just have to export an OBJ so I'll do this in my downloads folder <coughs> 